declare the July 22nd, 2021 BZA meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For the sake of speeding up things, if anybody has their cell phone turned on, I'd appreciate it if you turn it off. There's, there's probably going to be a few people who want to speak tonight. Okay. Roll call, please. Carrie Simpkins. Here. Bill Crawford. Here. Jeff Fisher. Here. Aaron Price. Here. Leota. Yes. Bill McDaniel. Present. Jeff Wesley. Present. And myself. Here. Next on the agenda is approval of the minutes for March 25th, 2021 and April 22nd, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda is a public hearing for petition number 15318 for Natalie and Caleb Pro. Uh, the petition for a home occupation to operate a two-chair hair salon in their home. Their home is at 5259 South County Road 100 East in Connorsville. And you wanna, I'm assuming that's you. You want to come up and tell us what, what you're doing? Okay, good evening. My name is Natalie Crow. I'm here to present the details regarding my in-home hair salon. The salon space is in the garage of our home, separated by the living quarters with a substantial wall and floor um, and has a separate entrance. Signage will be hung on the side of the building by the salon entry door. The space is 384 square foot, includes a bathroom. Off of our driveway, we have put in a 40 by 32 gravel lot for parking. It'll be a two-chair salon with one other employee. Um, benefits with that is being able to bring in and provide extra services and more clients. And the salon will be properly ran and taken care of if I would need to step away to take care of my son. I plan to operate on an appointment-only appointment basis based on the location of the salon. Hours of operation are Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I have 10 years of experience, and I'm very confident and more than ready to have a space where I can offer these clients a one-on-one -on -one experience. Okay. Anybody have any questions for me? I did notice when I went out there that it's all level, so handicap is not going to be an issue, so that's yeah. a good thing that you took yeah. care of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I guess I'll... Any questions? Any questions? Okay. You're done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to close the public hey, hearing. Buddy. If there's no discussion between any of us, go ahead and close the petition 15318. All right. I'll take a motion. Make a motion to accept. Well, hang on. Is there anybody? Yeah. Is there yes, anyone here that wanted to speak on it? Other than I didn't think so, but I just wanted to make sure yeah, I didn't you. want to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you moved. Did you? Yes, I moved. I'll second. Okay. Motion made and properly second to uh, close the public hearing. So now we'll go ahead and vote. Make a motion to pass it. I move to um, approve the home occupation. I'll second. All right. Motion made, probably second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. You just need to go down and see Bill, and he'll give you the permit for the home occupation. Okay? Thank you. And you're lucky. You get to go home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <coughs> Next on the agenda is a petition 15310 for Pavey and JT, AK, LLC. The petition is requesting a special exception for a filling station, car wash, and roadside restaurant to be constructed on eight acres, consisting of three parcels at 1527 South State Road 1, and a variance granting relief from the planned business development 
standard setback of 80 feet along the west property line abutting Jackson Boulevard to permit a 25-foot setback. Okay, somebody want to speak for you? Yeah, I'm John Pavey, uh, owner of Pavey's Grocery, and we've been at this since 1980, so um, I presently own three stores, one in Andersonville, one down the road at Everton, and one in Carthage, Indiana. And reading that, it's a little misleading. There'll be no car wash, and there'll be no restaurant per se. It's hot foods that we do within our store. It'll have limited seating, but it's by no means a restaurant. Uh, what we're looking at is about a 12,000 square foot store, and the only, oh, the only concept of it being a C store at all is we'll sell gas and diesel. So we'll have that C store concept, but outside that, it'll be a conventional grocery store. Uh, it'll have a butcher shop, it'll have full produce, it'll have deli, it'll have hot food. So it'll have everything you look for. Um, we just think there's a need for that on the south side of town because there's nothing here any longer. What once was on the south side of Con Connorsville. So that's what our proposal is. Um, probably should have come to you previously, but our experience over the years is we usually see 60 to 90 foot setbacks on the state highways, but we rarely see them on county roads. We usually see things 10 to 30 feet. So. We proceeded with our plans, and then when we get the deed out, get to look, and we're like, uh oh, so that's what brings us here, um, asking for that setback for, and Josh, who's the architect, Marshlack, uh, he's got the layout of exactly the way the building will look, and I think you guys might have a smaller copy there. But I brought some people, in case there were questions, Josh is the architect, Nick Greeny's the general contractor, and then Gary Cameron back here, is a civil engineer. So if you have questions on landscape, any of that type stuff, we brought them along. So Here. that's why we're asking for the setback. All right. Do you have any other presentation on your part? No, unless there's questions, I'll answer what I can or lean on the people I brought to answer them. Okay. I have it before we. Right now, we're just talking about the variance, or is this the variance and the special exception together? I assume they were together. Again, okay. Am what, I correct? What, what you do is the, yeah, uh, you can hear everything at one time, but then you would vote on both items separately. Separate. I assumed as much. I just wanted to make sure that. Um, that is correct. Okay. All right. So, all right. All right. Can you hear it? Be seated. You go ahead and see. And uh, if there's anybody that wants to come up and speak, which I'm um, probably assuming there are, um, please direct your questions or comments to us instead of to individuals in the audience. And then if we need to get them to answer a question, then we'll get that done for you. <coughs> okay. Is there anyone that wants to come up and speak? Good evening, my name is Gary Naylor and I'm a former county commissioner, um, also a member of the APC currently. Um, I was noticing, looking at the drawings, and uh, several years ago when I was commissioner previously, um, Casey, Casey's uh, filling station was interested in that corner and there there was a discussion that there's an entrance and exit off of <coughs> Veterans Memorial um, that was discussed as being a, a safety hazard uh, coming off that close to the intersection with with two lanes of traffic there left turn lane and and straight or right turn lane um, I guess with Jackson Boulevard being as close to it as, as it is, um, and they do have, if I un understood the drawings correctly, they do have an entrance, and egress, uh, and exit uh, on Jackson Boulevard. I, I would encourage the board to restrict that to uh, the highway entrance and Jackson Boulevard only uh, due, to the, due to the safety factor of Veterans Memorial 
as well as when Veterans Memorial was laid out, it was laid out as a limited access roadway. And the commissioners granted at that point in time when they opened it, they granted the existing entrances that are there now. And I don't believe any other entrances have been granted since that point in time. Bill, maybe. Uh, no, those are the only ones. Yeah. yeah. That's why the, the spacing on those. So I would, I, I, I'm not by no means against the economic growth of Pavey's uh, expanding down there uh, within the county. Uh, I just feel that we need to limit those entrances uh, to just those two, Jackson Boulevard and and State Road uh, 1. Yeah. yeah. So that's all I've got. Okay. Anyone else would like to make a comment? I do. Okay, I'm Roxanne Evans. I live on State Road 1. I am in the last house on State Road 1 in Village Creek. Okay, I have several questions. Number one, if you're addressing both of these, what what is the verbiage and why are they ch wanting a change from planned business back to something else? I don't understand that. And... I think we ought to see from their architect, whatever, what they are proposing as to exactly what it is to look like, where they're coming and going. And so if they're proposing to come out on State Road 1, then that's not a good, that's not a good place to come out. You know, you got, a, you got an intersection there. So are we going to be looking at a stoplight now there, or what are we doing? That's so that's a, so that's state. my that's my questions. I would like to see further from their architects what they are planning to do and why the why they asking for the special exception and the verbiage changed on this. What's the difference? I can. The two things that they're asking for. The first one is the where it says, and I want to make. I say it right that so we're talking about so I'm make sure I answer your questions the um, that they're requesting number one they're asking for a special exception what that means is most of our zoning code is actually quite a few things require a special exception in our county pretty much nearly anything you want to do within the county you have to come to the board and ask for permission so let's say um, even on even at your place, you know, the young lady that was here earlier, she's not that far down the road from you, actually. And, you know, she wanted to put a, a salon in her house. She had to come to us and ask for permission. So the special exception they're asking for is just that. They're asking for the board to review what, whether or not it's safe. It's, you know, there's, all, there's five, actually six things, I believe, that are on that list. So it's a very common thing. It's not unique to a filling station. It's pretty much anything that, most things that happen. And then the planned unit, the planned, the variance, is that the one where it says relief from the planned business development? Is that the one you're talking about next? Right, they're wanting to change what is classified as. Actually what they're asking for there where it says and a variance granting relief from the planned business development standard setback of 80 feet. They're not asking for a change in what it's called. Right now what the zoning code <coughs> says for that planned business development area, it says whenever they were drafting it, they were like, okay, we think it needs to be 80 feet off a road. And they're saying that 80 feet makes it too hard to build right there. They're asking for an 80 foot, they're asking for a variance from that 80 feet. They're not asking to change the type of zoning that it is. They're asking for a reduced setback, basically. So we're saying you have to be 80 foot from the road and they're asking for a reduced setback. Well, I don't understand why they need to go closer because they have eight acres. That is, that's the whole point of the meeting. Like, yeah. the whole reason, you yeah. know, why are you special? They're here to ask, they're here to tell us why they right. need that. I think we need to, like I said, I would like to yeah. see more things from them as they brought their their boards. Let's look at them sure. and but see what they have to show us. 
Does that, uh, does that, ex you understand what they're asking for better now, or do you have any more to questions? To some extent. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Hey, Carrie, I think some clarification, and Bill can correct me if I'm wrong. We've owned the corner two acres for about eight or nine years, and I think the variance there was already 20 or 30 feet. When we bought the additional six acres, it had the 80 feet, and we're going to be stepping over that line okay. with our construction. So, and the reason it seems strange, to me, what it is, is the backside that's on Jackson Boulevard. The purpose is that it's an unusual situation because what it calls for is. Any road that has frontage along a uh, frontage along the road, uh, most of the time you have two parcels rather than say full depth parcel that's going to road to road. So ordinarily, it's that you would see a rear yard setback that's a shorter distance. So because of unique circumstances under the zoning code, every one of those three setbacks is treated as a front yard setback. What's defined in the zoning code. So what they're requesting is to go back, the, the back part of it toward Jackson Boulevard is going to be reduced. It's not affecting the setback that's along State Road 1 or Veterans Memorial. So they're actually moving things back away from the highway more than they are, right. they are from bringing it out to the front. Now, would, is there a possibility you could maybe show that drawing and Maybe give a little brief description of I'll let the people that yeah, do that. Right, right. Oh, yeah, this is the development here. Uh, this is State Road 1. This is Veterans. And this is the Jackson Boulevard. And we have the 80 foot back to the canopy. Can you all see that? Um, and then back here is the 80 feet. And when we were looking at the ordinance, I think, in 153. We noticed that any arterial is an 80 foot setback, and we didn't foresee this as being an arterial. Mm -hmm. This is any other road as a minimum of 25. So, so when we got the uh, survey and this said 80, we were a little bit concerned about that 80 foot setback. So, this is the part that's in question back here. It's just we're over it by about 10 feet. So, you're asking for a 10 foot variance? We're going to take it back to 25. Just just to be safe, because we, we don't know what this development's going to be. Because, like the lady said, this entrance here, we will foresee that if any development here in the future, just per se, would have to use this and come down an access road because of the access to State Road 1. So you would need to have the buildings pushed back anyway to meet that, that setback to make it usable. Mm -hmm. You got, well, one so, point that, so what there are actually passing, we want to back. The rear setback at 25 feet it did not have road frontage, which would have been required within the land business district. If it was a general business district, all be required would be a 15 foot rear yard setback. And this is a little bit of the landscape screen that we're proposing along State Road 1. We have trees on all these sides and even on the south. Can you point that more towards the room? Because oh, I sorry. think we, we, most we of us have a drawing, so mm -hmm. I'd like for them to see it. All three sides. Bring it up to our front. Okay. Yeah. Now Jackson is Jackson. The, you're talking Jackson Street Road, whatever it is. Boulevard. That's the entrance into those homes in the back, correct? This is a subdivision over here. Yes. It yeah. would be that kind of blank. Yeah. Yeah. It's the next street over next where street you see homes. homes. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. the, and if you look at the aerial photo, yes, right. but that's the yes. only entrance into those homes off of that one. Is correct. that? Yeah. That's what because there, there's two main drives into the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, where Jackson comes down is if you look at the aerial photograph, you look at the plats. You'll see the the air between there and the next section of the subdivision, the plat of the subdivision, is the same large lots. Because the intention with uh, Mr. Tarvin was when they platted that was for development also right there, which was not residential. So that's why it was set up in that manner. Like I said, just to reinforce it, they're, they're moving back away from the highway is what they're trying to get back in the back there to where they have more relief back that way. Right? Correct. Our, our canopy will be 80 foot off the state highway. And do we know how far the front of the building is off the highway? Gary, did you know that? I'm sorry. How far is the front of the building from the highway? Um, 
your canopy is 80 feet. About 110, 120 feet. Has that state road one access been approved for the state yet? She's, she's asking if the access from state road one has been approved. No, we've been in contact with NDOT. And NDOT told us to come here first. They don't want to do all their homework, and then the county turned it down, and then we have to go back and redo it. So we've been in contact with them, and if we get approved here, then we'll be in contact with NDOT. I ask that because we're not in Village Creek where I'm down, but those folks have a kind of a nightmare right now of getting across. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very busy, no one goes to speed limit. And, uh, and, and I don't know what kind of list we're going to ask for. Yeah. That's in yeah. I mean, the veterans seems like that would be an easier one, but even that intersection is a bad intersection. Have you have you addressed it with the commissioners on the road off the of veterans yet? No, we have not. So and, both and of our are, line of thinking to help clarify things for you a little bit. Gas is going to be out here. This will be more for just diesel island. We're trying to separate them to keep congestion, make the flow a little better. So we're kind of wanting diesel to be able to go straight through so you're not cross-trafficking any a diesel truck with, with other cars. With, right. I so. was thinking of the conflict between the intersection that's already there and the sure, second sure. one. Now you've got a third busy one. That seems like a, a bad little mix. Well, I, I, could, I could see your point, but I think it can be managed, and that's what we'll go to end up with. And with a stoplight? Well, that, that's in <laughs> They don't let us make that call. How far um, from that corner to your proposed state entrance, the highway entrance, how far down is that? You're going to make me put my glasses on, aren't you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Gary, do you remember? It might be on the flip side. No, that's fine. Yeah. about 215 feet plus the right way. 215 feet from the bypass? From is that what you're talking about? From the property line, so it's whatever that right way is, it's probably 30 feet over there. So it's 225, 250 feet. What address would that come out to on State Road 1? Can you correlate that? Like 1550? I'd say pretty close to where the soybeans are, probably just past it. I have a name in that field, <laughs> or a parcel number. They get into the soybeans, I guess. Can I see that closer? But, but I don't yeah. know exactly. Yeah, we were trying to see if the beans were Well, I think the beans are going to make it more bad conversation. Anything later they can pass over details and make it more The address we have on this we, paperwork we know is 1527. I know. Yeah, we know where it is. And to speak a little bit to the entrance off the road, that was uh, an effort to reduce this congestion at this area so people wouldn't have to keep turning this way. Right? They could come off of this way and get in. Right. Yeah, it's that existing intersection that's already kind of bad for that neighborhood. Joe, is this going to be, you said you were about this for a mm -hmm. Is this going to be a grocery store and a milling station? Correct. It'll be mostly inside. Inside, other than where you come to pay for your gas, it'll work like a conventional production. Uh, out front, we'll have three gas pumps, and out here on the diesel island, I believe we have two two diesel pumps. But there's a third for a slave where they can pump from the inside, and then we'll also have. Uh, out there on the diesel area. island, we'll also have unleaded gas, gas with no ethanol in it. So we'll have that out there at the diesel island also. So there'll be a pump for that. What's your plans, or do you have plans for the soybean field? Yeah. I'm going to refer to it as the soybean field. Is that six acres, I think? Yes, it'll be just <coughs> under six acres. Green Hospital, mm -hmm. do you have plans for it? No. No plans at this time. So, so we're not planning car wars and all. No car wars. <laughs> Can I just enlighten some people about that? I know it's kind of confusing because it says 
filling station, car wash, restaurant. All those were lumped in when the zoning code was adopted. Uh, the language that was used at that time is 1993. So that was before you started seeing a lot of the convenience stores as gas stations. Really, it's referencing an old model, business model. And uh, once again, it's another one of the things with the discussions we've had that we need to look at as far as bringing different provisions of the zoning code up to a modern, contemporary standards. So it's a so it is a bit deceiving, and it's a little bit of a misnomer by having all three of those. But we have to put that in the ads because they're all part of that particular uh, you know, special accession. So that's part of the entire title. So, so those buffer zones that are going to be there, I mean, are they consisting of mounds or trees or bushes or grass or? Mostly landscaping. landscaping. Mm -hmm. Trees. Landscaping. The list was on there. Okay. The you can zoom in on our list and see all the. It's it, it wasn't so. I did. I'm a it's dork. Just, so just an example. Then. Yeah, it's mostly landscape stuff. It isn't. It isn't like trees that would inhibit your view turning in and out. Okay, that's that's why I'm asking. At least what I saw. Bill, back to your question: Is it going to be mound or is it going to be flat? Flat. flat. There are no mounds. Yes. Right now, they'll be on the south side, possibly. Okay. Dark green area. That's that's where the detention pond is. Is the dark green, so there might be some mounding on the south side of that that portion. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that answers some of this. Dave, you want to come up? Uh, I'm not here to. Uh, Tell us who you are. I'm oh, David here. Nutty. Thank you. Thank you. I live in Connorsville. That is actually considered out in the county. Uh, but I just want to make a point of interest, and that is um, what they are calling Jackson Boulevard. I assume that's what that that uh, public road is right in the back. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, when it was built, and I don't think they ever had all the layers of black dot they're supposed to. They put the base and was going to fill it as it grew. It was going to put the layer, later layers on it. They haven't yet. But um, it's built for uh, private vehicles, you know, personal vehicles. And uh, if there's any um, delivery trucks uh, of uh, fuel or um, uh, beverages or anything that's going to be larger than what you know, pickup truck or so would be. It might eventually uh, cause some issues with that road. Uh, this, my personal opinion, I'm, I'm not an architect or anything, but that, and the only reason that comes to mind for me is we have a, a local store built um, with this exit as what used to be an alley. And so the, if the alley is built like an alley, so the delivery trucks are tearing it up, just they're too heavy for alley surface, and I just didn't know uh, if there's any plans in the future just to keep an eye on that and make sure that um, uh, that it doesn't become potholed or eroded on edges or something like that. When that's going to come up is when they go to commissioners, because basically all we're here doing today is just approving the special exception okay. for them to develop, but they still got to go to the state. And when the commissioners look at that, they're going to look at just what you just talked about and say, now, wait a minute, if you're going to bring in trucks around there, we're going to have a problem with our road. And mm -hmm. I'm not even sure that road's even been accepted into the system yet. Mm -hmm. but, say that's one of the things I will say that I have quite a bit of experience with trucks tearing up roads and how mm -hmm. happy people are or are not with that. And uh, one of the things is that a county has a road rating right so every road has a weight limit rating mm -hmm. and sometimes that has to be adjusted because it did have too heavy a traffic on it but as a you know as a petitioner like he said you know, you're going to go to the commissioners for that and if there is a problem you know the county if the county has a road rating they are required to maintain the road to that rating mm -hmm. and if it's not there now 
even you know if it says x amount of pounds then if it can't take it it, it i hate like i don't want that for a county either mm -hmm. but that means we should probably reevaluate our roads better yeah. but it's kind of a catch-22 mm -hmm. so I, I hear what you're saying but it's not i don't know that it's really i think that that would be of interest to the especially the county highway department and the commissioners once okay. they make their final ingress <laughs> ingress pitch to everyone well, thank you for bringing it up yeah, because definitely. that's something that they might well, if John builds up there, then I'll have to drive all the way to Everton to get my sandwiches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. yeah, thank you. All right, thanks. <clears throat> thank you. Anyone else? Just got a question. Are those roads over there, are they taken over by the county or are they still private under? That's, that's, that's something we were talking about. I know you had trouble hearing, but. Um, we're, they're going to talk to the commissioners when they talk yeah, to them about that. that yeah, okay. We don't know sure. But they, right now, you know, we we don't have any knowledge of what, how that road's rated or who it belongs to, whether it's still with River Bend or whether it's the county. But that's something they're going to have to get into when they get with the commissioners. Yeah, yeah. this is just step one in a marathon. Yeah, they just they're just taking the baby step right now. And they get to the state and the commission would be bigger. It would be good if the surveyor would get all the roads listed that are in the county and have them added to the list officially and take the ones out that don't exist anymore. I've tried for four years to get that done and it didn't happen. I don't know if it's been done yet or not. Is it, Bill? As far as what? The road have, did, have we I don't got know the if those roads, roads over there have been accepted. I'll check my road in the Okay. Because they, like, like he said, you know, if that hadn't got the top surface on it, it never would have been. So Troy Tarver, if it's not accepted by the county, he may have given permission to use it. It's his subdivision, Jackson. I don't know. I'll check our inventory. What, what's accepted as by the state? Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, we've been getting them corrected here lately. What is going Thank tax, you for tax dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's everybody. Got. I'm not sure if any of them have, but I'll have to check. Anyone else want to come up and talk? I just have one other question okay. about you're having diesel pumps. Are these for cars or are they for the any semi to, that comes through? Are they going to be set up for? It'll be for any truck. I don't know how many semis you'd get on probably one, but you'll probably get. Oh, quite there's a, a lot that comes. You'll through. probably get quite a bit of triax to come. Yes, or we're, we're hoping. So. I have another question. <laughs> if you have a lot of questions, maybe you should come up here. No, I've been up there once. Thank I'm not you. trying to limit you, but you need to address. Yeah, I feel like yeah, you need to talk to us, and then like if you have questions, if you have questions for the board, we're happy to hear them. But if you have questions for Mr. Pavey, I'm. He seems like a very kind man. I'm sure he would probably talk to you afterwards about okay. things that aren't. I mean, I'm happy to hear any question you have that has to do with. The board's decision today. And any question you have, if you come up and tell us, then we'll get him to answer those. You know, it's, it's just to keep the peace and, and orderly. So. All right. Okay, well, if I could, uh, 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 Mr. Pavey, could you, it's, is our conversation about the hours of the operation and what you're doing with the lights, you know, the downcast lighting, the reduction of the lighting? What stores and an operation and what the hours are. Our hours will probably run 6 a.m. to probably 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And as Bill said, uh, any canopy lighting, everything, everything, the technology is so good anymore. Everything's a downcast light and they're bright lights, but they don't, they don't cause problems very far vertically either way. It's a downcast light, so. Uh, and the, uh, and what is the height of the, uh, of the Monument signs that you're going to use monument signs. We'll use monument time. signs, and they'll probably be seven foot tall. Yeah. So, so we won't have big signs. It'll be a monument ground sign with our pricing on it. So. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Go ahead and close the um, petition for Do we slide. need to read that into the record? Oh, I think so. Yeah, we didn't need to do that. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs>
You have a nicer voice than I do. I, that. I can read. Not all I agree can read. I can read. I went to Crazy School. I can read. Uh, this letter is in regards to the July 22nd meeting for the special exception 20 for a filling station car wash and restaurant on 8 acres at 1527 South State Road 1. We are not in favor of the special exception for the following reasons. Health effects. A number of compounds injurious to human health are released from gas stations during vehicle fueling and from underground storage vent tank vents. The compounds include benzene, I'm not going to get this one right, ethylene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. The adverse health effects of benzene include nausea, cancer, and anemia, increased susceptibility to infections, and low birth rate, weight. According to the World Health Organization guidelines for indoor air quality, there is no safe level for benzene. This filling station would be in close proximity to homes of children, a soccer complex, a church, daycare, and the river. I have concerns about the possible short-term and long-term health effects this filling station could have on those living in the vicinity of the filling station. Traffic. In the last two years, there has been a significant increase in individuals running, biking, and walking up and down State Road 1 all hours of the day and night. Traffic on State Road 1 continues to increase, and we see people almost daily going well over the posted speed limit of 55 miles per, miles per hour, as well as people passing in a no-passing zone. The intersection at Veterans Memorial and State Road 1 is extremely dangerous, and often traffic is backed up to the soccer field. A, fill in, a filling station, car wash, and restaurant would only add to the congestion in this area. I also feel that the number of walkers and bicyclists would increase, making State Road 1 and veterans more dangerous. A traffic light is desperately needed at this intersection. With traffic comes litter. We pick up multiple items from our yard almost daily. Trash also blows into our yard depending on how the wind blows. This would increase with a filling station, car wash, and restaurant. During fall and spring, soccer cars are lined up and down Veterans Memorial, making it hazardous to travel. This past spring, a child was hit by a car. Property value. A filling station, car wash, restaurant in this area will most definitely decrease property value for the homes in this area. Should we choose to sell our home, I feel it would be difficult to sell if there's a filling station, restaurant, and car wash visible from our front yard. Visual impact. We like the current view we have, and based on the vague letter we received, do not know if the, there are plans for a buffer to shield us from looking at a filling station, car wash, and restaurant. River, lake, well water, and other aquatic resource impact. Because of the high traffic volume and refueling, convenience store gas stations pose an unusually severe threat to surface waters. I do not know how close this will be to the river, however, I do have concerns about air pollution and ground contamination. Need. There are six gas stations less than two miles from this area. Speedway is a mile and a half, Shell at 1.7 miles, Speedway 1.5 miles, Country Mark 1.7 miles, Admiral 1.7 miles, Village Pantry 1.7 miles. Based on the number of filling stations in a two mile radius, I do not feel we are in dire need of a filling station. We do not feel a special exception should be granted for the proposed filling station, car wash, and restaurant. Respectfully signed, John and Natalie Moore, 1588 South State Road 1, Connorsville, Indiana. And they went to, their references include CEDS.org. That's where a lot of their data came from. I, I copied off the, uh, that, was, that was me copying that. Let's see what the organization is. Okay. Basically, it's their mission statement on that page. Okay. So this was uh, provided to the APC on uh, the 19th of July, and we received all that in, through Bill and an email, and we wanted to read that into the, into the meeting. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and uh, close the petition, 15310 for Pavey. I move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made probably second to close the petition. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any discussion among board members? Yeah, I have. Of course I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really shocked, right? 
Um, and I think maybe this is a question that I'm actually kind of not sure if Bill or maybe even Gary, uh, maybe even Brian, I'm not sure. Rose has come up a lot. Uh, Gary talked about the veterans. You know, everybody wants it to come off of a different road, but not everybody agrees what road it should come off of. I don't personally believe that that's this board's decision or even impact or I, I for lots of reasons, don't think that we really need to get into that. But my question is, and maybe it's you guys, I understand, believe, and I'm fine with going to NDOT. I, do, I deal with them, I deal with government agencies a lot. They want your local stuff done first. So I, I don't know that you can control that. Do you know or who makes the decision about Veterans Memorial? Okay, Veterans Memorial, action would most likely be a decision that is actually made by the commissioners. Because if you go to the highway department, you're going to need a cut or a drive or something like that. It's coming off as uh, you know, uh, Gary Naylor, uh, Mr. Naylor mentioned that uh, you know, when it was originally grants meant to be a limited, limited access road, you know, the two drives you know, weren't permitted. So that was my question because, you know, we. It is not the same thing. We just built a garage. We just went to the county highway, and he was like, "Yeah, sure, build it." Like you know. So is it? If that's the case, are they going to go to the county highway and get a driveway permit, or do they have to go to the commissioners and get an, a, a, an approval because it's more than just a driveway permit? I, I would recommend owns, go to the commissioners. The county owns the bypass. They actually bought it yeah. in order to build it. Typically, property in the county owns the center line of the road. The county actually owns it. That's why they have to go to the commissioners. Okay, so that that helps that. that actually, I'm more comfortable with that discussion because I feel like any risk they have, uh, if they if they can't make this work on any other roads, it, it doesn't work, and it's kind of not, you know. Now, and I feel like we've already established that the Jackson Boulevard, Jackson Street, whatever, it may or may not be publicly owned. Again, we're back in the same boat of. There's a lot of unknowns on that street. Is that as, let's pretend that it is a county road? Would that just be a driveway, or would that be a commissioner's decision? I think that would also need to be a commissioner's decision because it is actually a commissioner's. Yeah, if it is actually transferred over to the commissioners. If it's uh, transferred over, though, and it's like a typical county road. No, it's, it's like a subdivision dedicated. When you do a subdivision, you dedicate it to the public, which, like the city, would have control over sub, you know, subdivisions in town, commissioners, but in the county. Okay. So, like, right now, Troy Tarvin probably owns that road. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, if he's, if he's never had the surface put on, it's probably not. If, if he does own that road, can we even vote on this? You can vote on it. And we're not voting. It would be whatever sort of negotiations are necessary with, uh, Give him the, with Mr. Tarvin. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, we could give the approval for it That's to exist, I mean. yes, I mean. but we couldn't give the approval that we can't, if, if they can't get the access and they need it, then That's, it's dead in the water. That's beyond us. I mean, yeah. we're, we're really not here to approve the entrances or, or any of that. You know, or what type of road that is or who owns it really has nothing to do with what we're voting on tonight. What we're voting on is we're giving them the first step to go yes. forward and to give them that variance where they can move it back. The main reason I went down that path is I, I did not want to, I did not want to turn a blind eye to that. If if there's another check in there, there's, there is someone I think that's much more appropriate to answer the question on whether or not they should or should not come in off of veterans in this board. But I wanted to make sure that that check was in place before I made my decision. So that's why I asked the questions about the roads. Okay. Any, any more? I actually kind of, yeah, but it may not. I, so over the soccer fields and the line, you know, cars lined up, kids in and out. Is there any discussion about how to make, how to ease that? It, like, I mean, that's how it our hands too. I mean, it's just like the people saying there's people speeding down the state road. There's nothing we can do about that's that. That's not up to us to try to control. And like, you know, I think more of what we're looking at is, you know, does it would it decrease your property value? Is one of the questions. And one of them is the lighting 
I mean, to make sure that those lighting are downward lights? It does have in here the, you know, it's a special exception. Part of it is that it won't be injurious to public health or right. safety. So, so it, that is, that is, a, sort of, yeah. yes, I agree. And I, I feel like it's a stretch. I don't feel like it's Mr. Pavey's problem that the soccer, mm -hmm. that the soccer's mm -hmm. overrun his bounds of parking. I don't, I don't feel like it's his responsibility to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, my main question was, is if there was anybody that just happened to know of any, uh, I think, I think easing of that in that particular area. I mean, Nobody knows? <laughs> okay. Anything else? Not for me, I think I'm good. Yeah. Yep. I have a question, Bill. Okay. This would be more for Bill. Um, when Troy, Mr. Tarvin opened up the subdivision, was there, did the people that are buying those, or had those homes built, Across, I guess it'd be on the west side of Jackson Boulevard. Did they have any idea that there would potentially be a gas station? I really don't know what sort of conversations Mr. Tarvin had with anybody who bought the dwellings. But when you look at the plat, is he intended for both that's that and the next section to go, the next block of land that goes back to the next street that's parallel, parallel to the west? Um, Mr. Tarvin subdivided it in that manner. Uh, those particular large, large lots, because for the intention of uh, you know, uh, commercial development. So they, they knew that that could be developed commercially. Like I said, I don't know them. if they had the conversations, but yeah. like I said, you, you look at the plat maps, you'll right. see that's right. that was the, obviously the intent. I mean, that would be we, very we, bought, we purchased the corner from Casey's. From who? I'm sorry. Casey's. <coughs> okay. Tarvin had sold two Casey's, and that's who we bought the corner from. I see. Uh, we were talking more about the people that, that buy lots uh, adjacent to that. Mm -hmm. do, do they know that if if they if they're buying property, they should be looking at the plat of the of the land, and then they would know that those were designed to have businesses out there. It was probably a general public knowledge that he was planning on putting a strip mall. That. Mr. Tarvin had planned to spit them all on that area. Right. But I've known that for years, and I assume the rest of the public and the people that built the houses back there would have known that. You would hope that. Because it was mm -hmm. general knowledge throughout the city. It wasn't something no that comes as a shock, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Did most of you that live in State Road 1 know that he was planning on a strip mall out there? It's been so long ago, I don't remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've been there three years, knew nothing about it. Okay, that was long before three years ago. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, Casey's was 1999. So uh, I don't think you're all. You have any idea about what year it was originally platted? Because it would have been early mid 90s, I think it was when they platted it. They platted that after uh, uh, the, uh, the new part of Village Creek. Then they platted for the subdivision. <coughs> But there again, it's not really our, our board's responsibility to make sure every person out there knew that ahead of time. That's when you buy property, you should know what's around you and look at the plot of property around you because it's not a surprise. I mean, it's there, it's been there for ever since they developed that property. And once again, like I said, they have to go to the commissioners, they have to go to the state. All we're doing is just saying you can go there and, and you can say that we give them a blessing as far as or not a blessing or a blessing. Oh. Rephrase that to go ahead and move forward. Yes. Oh, Mr. Baby. Okay, in addition, of course, NDOT, I know there's, okay, the tank, that's what I do, or is there any other state agencies that you have to deal with? You know, yes, you, I think Gary can correct me. I think DNR will be involved yeah, in water runoff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the state fire marshal, because there's gasoline and it goes through Homeland Security. So we jump through a lot of federal and state hoops. So yeah, uh, yeah it still has to go through IDEM, state yeah. fire marshal, Homeland Security. <coughs> uh, NDOT will be involved. And then also your local soil and water will yeah. have to get their approval yeah. on and how what we do with water runoff. And then this also enters into the inventory that that be ordered. Uh, local emergency management has, so they then add that with the uh, potentially hazardous 
locations or in the event of in the event of a bad event. So. Okay. Good. All right. Anybody want to make a motion on passing or denying Fair on the right. variance first? Yep. I'm going to approve the variance granting relief from the plan business development standard setback of 80 along the west property line abutting Jackson Boulevard to permit a setback of 25 feet. I'll second that. Okay. Let's, let's do a roll call, please. Gary Steele? Yes. Bill Crawford? Yes, but yes. Yes. Jeff Fisher? Yes. Darren Price? Yes. Leota King? Yes. Okay. All right. That's been approved. That they can change the setback from 80 to 25 feet. Okay, now we'll. Take I make a, a motion to approve the special exception to build a car wash. Yeah. Or the filling station. The car wash is not in the program. That was what I read. Sorry about that. Filling station and grocery store. Filling station grocery store. A second. Okay. Got a motion made and properly second to go ahead and approve the special exception for filling station convenience store. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next on the agenda is the director's report. Made and proper second to approve the director's report. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, I'll take a motion for adjournment next on the agenda. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.
We'll call the July 22nd uh, area planning meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Jeff, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Sure. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
they have variations for uh, you know, over time with the different jurisdictions have different uh, zone and code provisions. So at those points where the city limits are, yep. if a home falls inside of that, it would be purview to the city's version. That's correct. Yeah. So it would extend, like, if, if they go back to the miles that they want, that would extend, even if it went beyond the city limits, that mile would it would be enforced? No. I no. Because it's outside the purview of their jurisdiction. Okay. So it would only be to the point of the city limit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another okay. question. Yes, yeah. for what I will do is I'll read. Uh, Bill, yes. I have another question for you then. You said that, and correct me if I misinterpreted, but you said that if the APC chose to do nothing with these amendments from the City Council, it would go back to the City Council. All they have to do is adopt it one more time, and it goes into effect for the City. And it would only, the ordinance would, these amendments to the ordinance would only be a, in effect within the city limits. Within the jurisdiction of the city of Connersville, correct. So out of the four amendments, what is within the city limits? Okay. That's, mm -hmm. that's. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm misunderstanding. <laughs> Exactly, but uh, I mean, I there's even at least one public use area within the city so limits that um, butts up against the, the river with Shelton's Flat. Um, the park, Roberts Park, would be that public use area that on the other side is a, a A1 district that would have to have separate. Okay, uh, but, but you, uh, said, you, you were saying, though, anything outside the city yeah. limits, it, it, yeah. it wouldn't. Correct. Okay. Effect. They, okay. So they would have no, none of these would have any effect out in the county. Okay. Bill, didn't they also include some subdivisions? I think mean, Glenwood Corporation too. Yeah, but the thing is, but those those were included with what they wanted, but that does not affect what is out in the county. Well, Glenn was not in Connersville last oh. time I looked. Oh, <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. But what I'm saying is that these were voted on by them to have repairs. Now, even though these primarily affect what is outside of the city limits of Connersville, it does not control the actions outside of the city limits of Connersville. Unless they annex Glenwood, that portion of that amendment is irrelevant. Yeah, or you annex any any other close-in subdivisions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. City Council CFO changes. This is the letters received from the uh, City of Connorsville. Diana Phillips made a motion to amend Pendant Ordinance Number Three Six Five Three. Brian Robb seconded the motion. On a roll call vote, Councilman Nutty, Councilman Warner, Councilwoman Barrett, Councilman Williams Jr., Councilwoman Phillips, Phillips, Councilman Robb, and Councilman Gray voted yes. Councilman Nutty made the motion to suspend the rules. Councilwoman Phillips seconded the motion. On a roll call vote, Councilman Warner, Councilwoman Barrett, Councilman Williams, Jr., Councilwoman Phillips, Councilman Robb, Councilman Gray, and Councilman Nutty voted yes. Councilwoman Phillips made the motion for a third and final reading. Councilman Robb seconded the motion. On a roll call vote, Councilwoman Barrett, Councilman Williams, Jr., Councilwoman Phillips, Councilman Robb, Councilman Gray, Councilman Nutty, Councilman Warner voted yes. Now we're getting into the, the motion, specific motions. Councilman Phillips made a motion, number one, to amend pending ordinance number 3653 to state that state the mid setback for minimum distance from, to Connersville or Glenwood corporate limits remain at one mile. 
Councilman Maddie second. On a roll call vote, Councilman Williams, Jr., Councilman Phillips, Councilman Robb, Councilman Gray, Councilman Nutty, Councilman Warner, Councilwoman Barrett voted yes. Councilwoman Phillips made the motion number two to amend pending ordinance number 3653 to state the setback distance, minimum setback distance to a public use area remain at one mile. Councilwoman Barrett seconded. Uh, can I just tell you it's unanimous? Yes. That is fine, please. <laughs> oh man, don't let my reading go. But, alright. Can we have Carrie back? As a <laughs> <laughs> I never claimed that as a scintillating public reader. But, Councilman Phillips made motion number three to amend pending ordinance number 3653 to state the setback to the minimum distance to record a rural subdivision and remain at one mile. It was unanimous in favor. Councilman Warner made the motion number four to amend the pending ordinance 3653 to state minimum distance to a residence remain at 1,620 feet. It is a unanimous vote, yes. Thank you, Bill. Um, do we have any discussion from the State Planning Board? If I'm understanding your life, that uh, these amendments that they made a motion to and that were unanimously approved are worthless and amount to nothing as far as the county. No, if you've got a rural subdivision, it also includes that, doesn't it? It says so right here, didn't it? Council. Because, because no. the rural subdivisions are outside of the city limits. Yes. They're outside of the city limits. The city, city council, council doesn't control anything. Authority authority in the city. Section National Minimum Distance to a recorded rural subdivision. Remain at one mile. Yep. Mm -hmm. Recorded rural subdivision. That's done grazing, right? Yep. We're not in the city but limits. It have an effect there because done grazing is outside of the corporate limits. City, city, council. Council. Yeah. city council has no authority outside the corporate limits. Yeah. So we council. would have to approve to put it in a rural subdivision here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the only way to have that out yeah. side of the city limits would be to amend the ordinance again with the one ordinance that the county commissioners adopted. So we have to go through this again as far as amending the confined feeding operation. That's the only way that those ones outside of the city limits those would take effect. So what they put, they approved here, is of no use. Yes, true. Uh, not functional. <laughs> they overstepped their authority. Yeah, Bill, why would the city vote on Glenwood? Just curious. Well, oh, just that, so the previous ordinance uh, included uh, a one-mile separation distance from Connorsville and Glenwood. Uh, one of that re-included into the, the ordinance for the city. Diana, would you like to come up? I wasn't ignoring you. I was trying no, to answer. Uh, I'm Diana Phillips, president of city council. That's not the way it was presented to us. That was not my understanding. That was my understanding, especially with the limits and the reason we did Glenwood is because it was included in the in that amendment Connorsville and Glenwood. It was my understanding and I think and I can't speak for everybody else but it was my understanding that if we voted for that amendment the specifically the one we weren't really sure why we were voting on this to begin with for the reasons you're stating but it was my understanding that with the city limit one that if a house was in our residence was inside the city limits it would limit this to a mile, even if it was outside the city limits. That's not what you're saying now. Well, no, that was that was the understanding. If it came back to this board, this board said, "Okay, we want to do what the city suggests," and then it went to the commissioners, and the commissioners say, "Okay, we want to do what the city or what the city suggests." So, if they do that, then it is extended beyond the city limits. Because it essentially is the county is agreeing, the commissioners are agreeing to that jurisdiction. So that would extend it past. That the is how you get there. Okay, well, that's. The I, knew was, I knew there was something there that it was that right, it did yeah. extend because the, right. I mean there the would be no. The discussion tonight is that if this board doesn't do that, then what is the actual jurisdictional arm of the of the city in regards to, to zoning? Okay. All right. In retrospect, I think maybe our conversation uh, with the city council probably wasn't as clean as it could have been with that. 
Yeah, yeah I, I don't know that the city council thought that they could with against the commissioners and the APC control what happens in the county though right we didn't yeah, right we right did so I think I think unless, we're all on the same page yes if the APC and the commissioners then all prove that as it was amended yeah my main concern is residences within the city having it a mile out from the city limit and my other big concern is public spaces because we're talking about Mary Gray Bird Sanctuary this is out in the county but this is my I'm on I'm president of the tourism board and Mary Gray Bird Sanctuary Manloaf Park Schrader Weaver among others I have a concern with them being that close to one of those I mean a CAFO less but, than a mile from see Diana but that, the, that can the, be done the houses that are outside Mary Gray Bird Sanctuary play into effect. They, they, the, the CAFO has to be set back away from the, the, the closest house. But only 1,600 and, 1600 and a quarter, quarter of a mile. Which is 1,320. Which is 1,320. Quick math. By the time you get all those houses around the Bird Sanctuary, you're, you you could possibly be a mile and a half or two miles away from the bird sanctuary. You could not be, could. You could not be though. I don't think so. I think if you'd lay it out on the GIS map, on the, uh, and circle it, you. We I mean we've looked at it. That's why we said all those numbers weren't necessary in the ordinance because we were such a heavily populated or residential area that the houses. The homes prevent it from ever getting close to a, a school, a public place, a, a church. Uh, you know, our, our homes already keep that away from those. Okay. Well, then my question would be... I mean, we took the time to look at the map right. with the GIS and, and plot it. Where, where can we put CAFO? Okay. Okay. And, and I think that's the confusion. I mean, everybody says, well... If that's a mute point, well then why don't you put the language in? Well, our argument was the more language you have in ordinances, the the more apt there there's opportunities for confusion or questions or appeals. And we're trying to we're trying to limit the cost of legal appeals for everyone. Okay, so my question would be when if someone if someone comes in and wants to put in a capo somewhere there is a there is a hearing it's not an automatic thing there's a hearing right. it's a special exception and even right. a special exception so even if there are extenuating say it would happen to be closer then you could deny it on that yeah, yeah okay. Absolutely. okay well I, I thought so but uh, my, my yes. question is this then someone wants to put one at Dunn Grayson and only has to put 1650 feet right yep. 1320 1320 1320 yeah my nose is just as sensitive as yours <laughs> Why wouldn't you put it a mile? I mean, we got about 50, 75 homes there. Why wouldn't it be a mile away? But from there's there? other now yes. county. There's other homes outside Dun Grayson wow. that puts it farther away from Dun Grayson. One of the, one of the the problems that we're working on correcting is a, an area like Dun Grayson and Irish Acres should have been zoned residential suburban and not A1. Well, the thing that we're and all then, forgetting then, about here then, is our jobs here as council people and as area planning. I'm the, I think I'm and, and, and Brian, you're Thank you, the Chamber of Commerce. We are here to protect the quality of life of the individuals in Fayette County. And putting a 30,000 hog pig operation within a, a quarter of a mile of anyone's residence is not a quality of life issue. I mean, it is a quality of life issue. I mean, we want to bring jobs in here, we want to bring people in here, and they sit them next to a hog lot, they're not coming. And we just heard them talking a while ago about having a gas station. Yep. We just talked about it and said, you know, quality of life was mentioned. Did those people who built that home know you're going to put a gas station there? Did I know you're going to put a pig lot 1,300 feet from my house when I bought out and done grazing? No. I mean, it, it works both ways. Yeah. David, would you ask me? Yeah. I'm David Nutty. I'm on City Council, uh, District 5. I serve with several here in the audience. Um, my main concern, when we discussed it, I 
uh, voted yes on the four or five, I can't remember what, four, four uh, items. <clears throat> uh, but my main concern about the one mile outside the city limits, and I appeal to you to approve that, is because the only water supply that the city of Connorsville has is the aquifer there by the river. So uh, we looked one mile, we just took the city limits, went one mile out every direction we could think of, and one mile in most cases covers the aquifer. So there would not be a, a CAFO built on or near that aquifer. But based on what the county put in place, it doesn't it doesn't go a mile from this, out from the city limits. The city limits is the end of the jurisdiction here. Right, and, and we're and asking them to consider, consider this. That's what you just talked about, though. Goes through as far as the voting process, right, right. Jeff? That's correct. We're and asking goes, that you consider yeah. putting right. that as right. part of the um, then it'll go extend the a mile out amended the and it would be in ordinance. The, what do they call it? Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. So, David, Go at ahead. the same time, when you looked at a mile beyond the city limits, mm -hmm. did you take the time to look at where the residents were outside that mile? Uh, only those that was within the mile That's what I looked at. Okay, so was there any place that you could put a CAFO within a quarter of a mile of city limits I, because of other residents laying in that mile buffer. I, I think there is. It's limited, but there is. There are, yeah. I think uh, to do it, you had to, if, because if it's your own residence, then you can omit that. Yeah. Okay. So it had to be an owner. And then, and then I think there were some discussions about we didn't know what was a floodplain, what wasn't, right. that may have. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that it was a thorough look, but, but yeah. on the offset, it looked like potentially. Okay. That's what I was wondering. It yeah. certainly wasn't something you looked at. And there was no way it could ever happen because there, there's an argument to be made because you take a residence out because that's their residence, and then they could potentially do it, and then they, they don't have to be that far from their own residence. Right. 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 And if they own. And since, uh, own. but that would still, and, and just so we know, I mean, that would still have to come before the board, and yeah, that's one where up. somebody from the city comes and says, "Hey, we have phenomenal water in this community. That's yeah. really close," and that's where the board gets to say, "This one doesn't right. make sense." Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and, and since we have a wonderful aquifer of water uh, for the city of Connorsville, it is the same aquifer the the town, the village of Everton gets their water also. So if it affects us, it affects them. <clears throat> and uh, it was mentioned um, during the city council meeting that um, quality of water was, is not the issue, it's the quantity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, if your water is contaminated, you can't use it, then you have no water. So That's your true. quality is That's true. Quantity is zero. So you, don't, you just don't have any water. So, um, yes, we have several um, things. We have four things uh, for you to consider, uh, and um, I won't discount any of those. Uh, I'm, I just know from my professional background, 40 years in the water, drinking water industry, more than that now, 47 years, um, uh, I appeal to you to uh, at least consider that. Thank you. Mr. President, yes. I have a question for Bill here. Yeah. Um, so, Bill, if we if we choose not to uh, do anything with these, the city council puts it in. Mm -hmm. Then, if there's any special exceptions, mm -hmm. hearings that come up, um, I would assume that the board of zoning appeals would also look at the city's concerns if if that for instance would come within a mile of the city limits that application and and take that into consideration yeah that's the and 
the zoning board has shown that in the past. Yes, they have. Because, because well, it's a little example is we did have the one that was turned down. It was on a water basis. Yeah. Now it wasn't done. But, uh, so, yeah, and so that's, they did look at it for that, that reason. That's the only one that was turned down side of this current, the current order, well, the one that's mended was uh, it's the, the board did take into consideration water. So, um, but that was, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the purpose of us putting the special exception requirements back in to the CAFO ordinance so that the board could look at each individual application. That is correct, yes. And, and make a decision based on yes. the circumstances yes. at the time. Yes, that is why we amended the, the ordinance to include, or to remove the uh, permitted use to special exception. So we did that. That was at the meeting at Roberts Park. If we would want them, or would not want to move forward, how would how would you address the motion to reject? No, it would be motion to take no action. To take no action. Okay. And now, specifically done this way. Now, so it's not a motion to take no action. It's a, uh, we would take either all or none of the amendments. No. And you, they're all presented to the division. Right. They're all right. voted separately. We could so do, each one needs to be considered separately by the area plan commission. And I would encourage you to either accept or reject each one individually. Because yeah. if you reject it, then it goes back to the city council. City council approves it. Then it is, in fact, in their jurisdiction. It is their ordinance. Okay. If you accept it, then then we essentially put this on for another public hearing and then we send it back to the commissioners for their review regarding it. It would essentially be, we're deciding whether or not we're making that change to it, is what the city proposes <coughs> us to make, or we're not. If we don't make their changes, then it goes back to city council and city council can, council can adopt it for their jurisdiction anyway. Right. But as we've said, it almost has has very little actual impact. Um, if we accept it tonight, then it's essentially our changes to it. We're sending it back to the commissioners for their review. And you could do that for each one of these, um, each one each one of the four um, changes. And that puts the extension out further then, right? That would include the county, too. That's what wait, wait, if what? we no. accept it, we would. If you accept it, it goes back to the commissioners. Then correct, because then it's it essentially the commissioners. The too. It's yeah. the commissioners. We have to hold a new jurisdiction. public hearing. Start we over. have to advertise. Great. We have to uh, prepare changes to the actual ordinance. Hold the hearings. Then we, we could not vote on time. number three tonight. What's that? We could not vote on motion number three yeah. tonight. Oh, we, we could vote on them, but it's, this is not a public hearing, Bob. Yeah. Because. This is a meeting held in public. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is a public me this meeting. This is not a public So what's Jeff saying? If we could vote on each one of these issues, which he recommended, but we can't vote on number three. Can we vote on any of them? You can yeah. vote on every one yeah. of them. Yes. You can vote on every one of them. You can vote on every one of them. They just don't, they're not in place just because we vote on them. If we, if you vote, or if we vote to approve them, mm -hmm. all four of them, hypothetically, okay? then they are then sent back to the commissioner. After, no, I apologize. We have a public hearing, and then they're sent back to the commissioner. No, if, with our recommendation. If we vote to recommend them yes. to the commissioners again. Correct. Any or all. If, if, Any we, or all. if we say no to these, then they can still be passed by the city, but then that is the point where the city says, yeah, we want them, but they really have no functional value outside of city limits. But I think I don't know if I'm making it more confusing or if I'm making it. Yeah, no, no, you're making, I you're making sense. I, I, I think I, I think even even if the city council, if we rejected these as recommendations, these four, and the city council, they went back to the city council and they voted them in, it would become part of the ordinance under the city limits. Correct. Correct. And I think it would hold weight at a special exception. For the board of zoning, for each potentially potential yeah. application, no for them to say, "Oh, well, that falls within a mile as a city, and the city would like for us to keep 
those CAFOs away from the city. They're not obligated to, but they could use that as some strength to reject that CAFO. Yes. Application, as, as I guess is what I'm saying. And I, you know, I, I have no problems with the city council making these recommendations and part of their own ordinance realizing that the city council cannot control laws outside the city limits that's that's uh, representation without taxation or taxation without representation whatever yeah, yeah i understand yeah. what you're saying you're saying that because the commissioner is accepted as presented as the, presented uh, it is i understand it it is the law outside the city limits it, it actually it's inside the city limits as well but um, if you make these, this only carries weight inside the city limits if it becomes just city council approval. And, and I, think it would, I think it would hold some weight on an individual basis on an application for a CAFO if it falls within that mile of the city limits and can be put there, as David said, there are a couple of places that possibly could be, then the Board of Zoning could look at that and say, you know what, the city of Connersville would really like for us to stay a mile away, and that falls within that mile. It does become a water quality issue, uh, could be, uh, become a water quality issue, and they could deny that application because of that. So I, you know, I, I don't think this is a bad thing that the city is asking to, for this to be part of the ordinance. I don't think the county commissioner should have to change their ordinance, personally, to accommodate that. I just, I don't know. I understand what you're saying, Gary, as far as that part But what I don't like about the, under the circumstances it must be, is that the county, and I understand the county has the, has the word on the thing, but what you said, they can possibly say a mile, but there's no guarantee. No, right. not, not out in the county. They can put that just 1,300 feet. Right. Once you get outside, that's, of that's the part I got a problem with. I do too. You know, if the county can just say, you know, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, maybe and probably wouldn't, but there's no guarantee. And I'd like to have the guarantee. And, and we've got subdivisions. Well, then why don't we just why don't we just abolish? Animal Ag no, I, no. in Fayette County because but because that's what our past ordinance basically did and what we were trying to do was try to open it up for some of our existing farms I, I understand that, to, to, to have modern agriculture but I don't animal think agriculture asking, I don't think it's asking too much to have at least a mile from what the city limit is then why didn't we discuss that? I mean, well, I don't know, but I'm, I'm just saying. It, I mean, we. But this was heavily discussed. I know, but I'm just saying. And, and I just, I don't understand the. Well, Gary, no one's going to keep you from raising hogs. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. No, you can raise as many as you want. You just can't have a confined feeding operation. <laughs> three or four thousand. You can raise three hundred hogs if you want. You can raise five hundred hogs. Just yeah. No one's going to stop you. Hey, do you have a Comment. Uh, should I? I've spoken. Should I allow her first? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I was just going to say, and uh, pardon me, Vivian, for okay. getting ahead of you. No, I have not. spoken already once, uh, but um, uh, when this all came up uh, on council, I said, you know, I grew up in the middle of the city. I really don't know that much about farming other than what I've learned through the years. have great respect for farmers uh, and what they do for our community and our, our country. And I'm not against any kind of uh, farming business, whether corporate or, or family. Uh, I was interested in saving our greatest resource, and that was the water. And Gary, you said it's really not a bad idea to protect it, really, uh, in, your, in your words. So uh, since it's not a bad idea and there's no guarantee to anybody in the future because 
I'm not going to be around forever. You're not going to be around forever. The next person might forget. Go ahead and put it in writing. Go ahead and put it in in uh, an amendment to uh, what you currently have and protect our water. Just go ahead and do that. You know it's a good idea. Most of you know that's a good idea. So we don't have any other source of water other than our aquifer. So, and I know there's lots of other reasons. There's three more on your list, but you can tell by me, I have a passion for making sure that Connorsville has good water. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and put that in there. I appreciate it. And I know the community in years to come would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I know you said it's really not a pu it's kind of a public meeting, but not a public meeting. I've spoken several times. Everybody knows my position here. These are we're talking about factory farms. We're not talking about uh, a farm with 300, 500 hogs. We're talking about to be economically viable, a farm, a hog farm specifically in this area is what we're talking about, and they're going to have four, five thousand animals consuming five gallons of water per animal per day. I've researched it. When I first came to this APC meeting out the Miller building, I was given like one day's notice and just got up and spoke. When I went to the commissioner's meeting, I think I had three hours notice. Didn't really research it. By the time I went to city council, I had researched it. I finally figured out I have to research it. If zoning, if these committees do not protect other landowners that do not want CAFOs from a CAFO a quarter mile. We're not even talking about half mile. We have legal precedent in Indiana. We have families that have gone to court, have gone to the Supreme Court from Hendricks County, from Bartholomew County. They can't win. The Indiana right to farm legislation has followed North Carolina's legislation, and it pretty much precludes they are, they are going to lose. They can get the uh, families, the wife in this one, she gets asthma. I mean, they, they, were, they live in an old farmhouse covered with flies, and they, they, she's got asthma now. Too bad. It's farmer's right to farm. If these, organiz if these boards do not protect the community, these people, these people could be harmed, and there's, they have no recourse. In my area, I'm on the Glenwood Aquifer. I didn't know that two weeks ago. And at Glenwood Aquifer, they're talking about possibly a 10,000 uh, hog farm, which could consume 50,000 gallons a day. Will my aquifer sustain that? Everybody says, well, you go to the state, the state will determine. I have about as much confidence in the state doing what, the right thing than, than the federal government right now. Um, they, they're not going to protect us. Nobody's going to protect us. Um, the courts will not protect us. So um, please accept all the resolutions, protect the areas that the city council wisely, they thought about it, they researched it, and wisely made these recommendations, and I, I, I beg you to accept those recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does the, anyone on the APC board have a, a pleasure as to take any amendment? Is there a motion? I would entertain a motion. We'll start with number one, number two, number three, number four. Ask for a vote on each one, ask for a voice vote. I have to have a motion to even yeah. accept an amendment, and right now I don't have a motion to even take an amendment so do we I accept do we make a motion on each one individually then yes you would make a motion to I'll accept make a motion we accept the amendment number one okay second, second. I have a motion and a second we'll roll, roll call vote okay so just so we're clear so motion yeah. to accept amendment. amendment one which would put it back to uh city council to accept and we would have to have a, a public hearing and then go to the commissioners and then accept the same the same ordinance that was adopted by okay. so I guess a, a yes vote would put it back to the city council 
a no vote still puts it back to city council where they can you know put the amendments in anyway and it cover their jurisdiction if that makes sense right okay. and that one does and that one doesn't do any anything as far as the point, for example, is is that right, Bill? If this is the only one that got a majority vote from the members of the plan commission, this is setting the stage for a public hearing to forward another amendment. This, if only one of them adopt, the amendment goes to public hearing. Yes. Brian, with all due respect, could you, when you do each one, can you read which one you're oh. talking about? Uh, number one, to amend pending ordinance, ordinance number 3653 to state that a minimum setback distance to Connorsville or Glenwood corporate limits uh, remain at one mile. And then we'll vote. So we have a motion and a second. Who's second is it? Brian Robb. Okay. And that's, if you'll read the motion back again. Oh, uh, that is... Uh, to set the minimum setback distance to Connorsville or Glenwood corporate limits to remain at one mile. No, to, to uh, accept. accept. Yeah, the motion, motion to, to, to accept. accept. Yes. Yes, please. Darren Price. Okay, and again, so... <laughs> yes. Goes back to the city. Well, yes would mean we are saying, hey, this is a new proposal we're making. We would have a public hearing upon it, and then we would give a recommendation to the commissioners. All right. And it goes back to the commissioners. Yes. Yes. A no. A no, we're saying we can't stop the city council from being able to do this within their jurisdiction, but it really will not have any actual practical effect on the county. On Amendment 1, I vote no. Leota? Yes. Brian? Yes. I'm sorry, Brian Durham. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Gary Naylor? No. Robert Stewart? Yes. <coughs> Brian Robb? Yes. Bill Mackey? No. Okay, four to three. Uh, Errol. Yeah. Errol, you abstain. Oh, morning. I'm sorry. I want to abstain because I don't know one up yet. So I want to okay. catch up on this. Okay, uh, motion one passes four, two, three. Um, the second pending ordinance or the second uh, amendment to pending ordinance, uh, minimum set that back distance of public use area to remain at one mile. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. second. I'll do a roll call vote. Could I? Uh, is there discussion. any discussion? Brian, if I may. This one right here has created pure havoc with our old ordinance. Right, because we don't have a real definition of it. Because we don't have a definition of public space. So we've had neighbors go out and build parks to try to stop the permit process. That's why we need to get this out or make it specific. Name the public areas. Or say, or say a public use area that's actually owned by the government, or owned by the, or owned by a, some type of municipality. Yeah, we could set a or a size limit. Or but this, again, this might give you the opportunity at that public hearing to then make a change to that, and then send that off, put the vote to the commissioners and the council. And it has to be accepted to make that change. Correct. If you did and not well, if you, changed. If you rejected it, then it wouldn't just it wouldn't include the public use area. It would just I had a question on public use myself, but I'll let them right. I, I think there's I don't think there's probably anyone that would disagree that public use area, whether it's whether or not it's in this ordinance or not, it needs to be clearly defined in our right. ordinance. And the definitions. Yes. It, it is rather ambiguous yeah. because you can look at about two or three different two locations in this ordinance. I've looked at other ordinances and 
honestly. I haven't found, yeah, I need to do more research, but I really haven't found a good definition that would have dealt with the problem. Well, Bill, any words you use more than 10 letters, you need to explain them. I think he was got Bob, there's just some words that you can't explain. Just can't explain. You can't explain them down to one right. or two syllable words, Bob. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll have a roll call vote. Darren Price. Yes. Leota. Yes. Brian Durham? No. Gary Naylor? No. Robert Stewart? Yes. Brian Robb? Yes. Bill Mackey? No. And Daryl Drew? And that motion carries four to three. The Third Amendment uh, to state that the setback to a minimum Set back to a minimum distance to recorded rural subdivision remain at one mile. Okay, I have a question on that one. Yes, sir. So if those areas in the process are rezoned to suburban rather than rural, does that affect, do we have to go in and change the ordinance again? Yeah, I think not it has to be incorporated, wouldn't they? No, no. no. no it's, it's not necessary. Okay, recorded rural subdivision. I would suggest is because there are rural subdivisions, as Brian pointed out, that have not been developed, they're never going to be developed. There'd be some other language that you could possibly have with that to clarify. And then we have other, there's other locations where you have uh, some of the places, for example, Harrisburg. Well, you get into places like that where it's, there's some flats, but you still have that entire village area, but right. it isn't defined as planted subdivisions. So, it's like, can you tell me where Harrisburg need, ends? Right. Specifically, yeah, there's not a specific spot where that ends. The same with like Alquan or Waterloo, there's not a specific yeah. spot where it ends. But if they are rezoned to residential suburban, or a central business district within them, uh, the entire parcel uh, would have a uh, separation distance. Uh, if we don't accept uh, number three, uh, have a, a separation distance of 1,320 feet. Because, because that, that stands as, El Point is an example where you know, most of the areas of El Point are actually platted. Yeah, but there's other ones that aren't. I think that, for example, is down around uh, Lionsville list. Mm -hmm. You have multiple platted subdivisions along Springersville Road. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to set number three. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll have a roll call vote. <coughs> Darren Price? Yes. Leo King? Yes. Brian Durham? No. Gary Naylor? No. Robert Stewart? Yes. <clears throat> Brian Robb? Yes. Bill Mackey? No. Daryl? Yes. I'm staying. And motion carries four to three. The Fourth Amendment uh, pending ordinance. Oh wait, Jeff, I have a question with these things. Now we have a majority of the people over here. Does it require to be a majority of the entire board as far as? Yeah, because the quorum is five, but we only have five votes in favor, so we don't have a majority of the entire. Board. APC requires. You're you're correct. We have nine members. Correct. Yes. Do we have nine active members? Yes. Yeah, it requires a quorum of the actual membership. Okay. So we would really then have to do this again. No. Mm -hmm. It would be a failed motion. Be failed. Because yeah. we don't yeah. So my apologies. Yeah, we do have to have we do have to have we have to have a quorum of of the entire body, not just the present uh, body. That is okay, my mistake. So if, uh, yeah. so if there is a 
tenth and two then, so we'd still need five people that would. So, so none yeah, of those three have passed. It might make sense to table this and continue it until the next. The it's already, it's already done. Three of them, three of them have already been voted on. Sure. Yeah, so it would, they're done. It can only be the last one. Yeah, and that's the one we'll all that. agree on. So, we'll take the fourth motion, or the fourth pending ordinance uh, amendment to pending ordinance. 3653 minimum distance uh, to a residence to remain at 1,620 feet. So moved. Second. Brian, is that you who second? Yeah. Is there any further discussion? Well, I want to make it clear. If we don't have five on this one, either way, then this, then, then there's an argument to be made that these are all rejected, and essentially it's as if you, it's, it goes back to the city, but the county commissioners have already passed the ordinance. That is correct. If we get five on one, then, then, then it goes it back to a public back hearing, up. and all four of them could be opened could up. Help. They could all be opened up, yeah. along with other amendments. And yeah. another option is that if there are members of the area plan commission who feel strong enough to bring it up for moving forward with any of these as an action itself. Because the Area Plan Commission can still bring up and initiate an action on these. Yeah. But we'd have to have five votes. Yeah, we'd have to have five. To open it back up. And vote to do it and instruct me then to work on the language. Well, we also, at the end of this, have to vote one way or the other, which we, which this will decide it, on whether or not to, to publish and make a law what the commissioners accepted. And we would have to have five to be able to do that as well. We can't just not act on what the commissioners did. If we don't act on it, then that's then it would be sent back to them, and they they can they can do it without our permission. But. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Say that again. Well, the, so typically, if if you ignored the city portion of this, we would have we would have passed it, and then it goes to the commissioners, and then it gets brought back to us for us to accept and publish, and that's when it becomes effective ordinance. That means that after we publish it, then then anybody that applicant, that's what they're applying under. Okay. After 10 days. Right. So we need to make, we, at the end of tonight, we need to make the motion whether or not we're publishing a fine, a finished ordinance, which is a tr tricky proposition. I mean, <coughs> we would need five votes to be able to do that. Right. Well, excuse me, Jeff, I hate to sound ignorant, but for me, a quorum means you have to have more than Five. There, there is. You have to have five. If you got nine, you got to have five here, right? That's a quorum. Yeah. And you'd have, if in that case, that scenario, just as it is, would be for an applicant, you have to have all five. If that were the case, you can, you can make, you can do things with five. And you're now saying all you got to have five votes, not just have five people. Those are the no, yeah. you have to have five, for anything to pass on this board. You have to have five, five, members, votes. five votes. Period. Yeah, five votes. You only that is a people. correct. Indiana code. That is Indiana code, and that is yeah. that is Four. applicable almost exclusively only to us. Yeah, to you. Okay. Oh, very rarely does that happen on other boards. Well, it's generally a. Nine of my meetings would never meet if that was the case. Well, you can still meet. <laughs> you can meet. No, what I'm saying is you actually. can meet. So you can meet with if there are only five of us tonight. We, you could meet and you could conduct business and pass motions, but you would have to be unanimous rather well, than four five, one. Five, 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 five. So I'll reread uh, the uh, amendment to uh, minimum setback distance of residents to remain at 1,620 feet. We have a motion and a second. Was there any further discussion? Seeing none, a roll call vote. Darren Price? Yes. Leota? Yes. Brian Durham? No. Gary Naylor? No. Robert Stewart? Yes. Brian Robb? Yes. Bill Mackey? No. And then Daryl Drew? Substance. And that motion fails. Um, so the next step is to 
whether or not we choose to you publish. You guys are trying very hard to make this a law school yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said you had But well, we could wait on the board, too. Mm -hmm. Do we have to act on it? No, we don't have to. No, Tonight. if there's not a motion. No, we don't have to. We don't have to. But, but we need to discuss it and make a motion to, to continue for just for notice for the public to, mm -hmm. to the next meeting. Mr. President, I guess I'm of the opinion that this we do have a commissioner on this board mm -hmm. that's not present tonight. Um, he did vote for the ordinance. Um, I, I really feel that it would be important for him to be here, his presence be here, um, to, if nothing else, discuss why he thought that it ought to be a law. Right. Um, before we make a final motion on accepting the ordinance, that would just be my opinion. <clears throat> so it would be a motion to continue or table? Let's get into that one again. Table or continue? Okay. Table has to be a motion on the floor first. Yeah. So it would be a continuance? Or just no action. Just no action. Yeah, we just don't, we just have a motion. We just don't take action. I mean, if the commissioners choose to, they can publish and adopt it if that's their, I mean, they have Just make a motion to continue or, or to take no action and not publish at this point in time to where it, just make it clear in the record that it's, our intention is to not have it be law until the next meeting we discuss it. I would, Mr. President, I would uh, so move that motion, motion to give the commissioner to not an opportunity to speak. Not what? Publish pending ordinance What's that number? 3653. So the motion on the floor is to not publish pending ordinance 3653. Second. We have seconds. We'll do a roll call vote. Darren? Yes. Leota? Yes. Brian Durham? Yes. Gary? Yes. Robert? Yes. Stewart. Brian Robb? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Daryl? Hey, that one carries. A motion to, to not publish. So that was all, yes. Is that we'll prepare the letter in the name of the area planning commission explaining the for the Now, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but these four, four actions will go back to the city council now. Mm -hmm. They could pass them again. Then it will come back to us the same, and no. we would have to put it in our ordinance? No. No. Like... It, 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 it only happens once. <coughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Just wanted to make sure, make sure I was clear on that. Okay, the next agenda item we have is our uh, zoning code. I'd like to look at the, the home-based business, rural-based business. Just as a brief overview, I think, uh, you know, 2020 COVID showed us the importance of being able to work from home as it is right now without, a, you know, a, a home occupancy permit. Technically, you can't work from home in Fayette County. You're in violation of the zoning code if you are working from home. Um, this is intent is not, to, not necessarily self-employed, just working from home yeah. for a company. Yes, as well. Okay, yes. I, I want to make sure. Yeah, because it then becomes an occup your your occupation is your house at that point. Um, it's very confusing and trying to rid that. You know, you don't want somebody to have to get a permit because their job now allows them to work remotely because that doesn't make sense. We, you know, our zoning ordinance is from 1993, which is a readoption from 1967. Almost entirely readopted from. Actually, the language was originally from the 1930s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why it makes reference to millinery as a typical and standard home occupation. Yeah. Sure I don't know how many hat makers we have in Fayette County these days, but it's I guarantee it's you it's not many. Uh, basically, it would be to create a tiered system. So if you were one of those people who was just working from home in your home office, you would not need a permit. Uh, you wouldn't have to 
do anything, just work from your home office. And then as you move into um, allowing people to come into your house, it would allow staff approval for certain. If you had no sign, um, think of um, direct sales individuals are technically operating a business out of their home. Um, that could be something approved at staff level where you have a um, a, a party of sorts where people come to your house and buy things and um, wouldn't have to come before the Board of Zoning Appeals to get something like that approved. Right, so like the one we dealt with last month yeah. would have been a tier two. Yes, that would have fallen uh, because there's no sign, it's appointment only. Um, okay. I, you know, he's using a room in his, his house. That would have fallen under tier two. Uh, the lady tonight uh, would have fallen under tier three because she wants a sign. She's going to have regular operating hours. Uh, she built a parking lot for the facility. That would be a tier three. Yeah, another thing with the yeah and, and having a, an employee outside of herself. That would be a tier three. Uh, it, re it really just modernizes. You know, that's more and more jobs are work from home. We don't want people to have to pay. Or, Another important aspect is it's also taken into consideration. Uh, basically, uh, in town, in subdivisions versus rural areas, now, some things might be not be appropriate in town, but it might make sense someplace out in the county. Mm -hmm. you don't have you don't have debts, and, uh, and there's and there's still certain things that you can do, such as uh, things that are in hazardous space, the hazardous materials. That's like right. So, we, so we are currently, Brian, how would we police this? It's, I mean, it's hard to police that. I mean, the only way right yeah. now with policing is it's just like complaints. Yeah. And that's, that's still what we think. I mean, I, and I, I, know, I know a couple of businesses that are operating in a, in a non business district that, you yeah. know. I mean, I, I guess it goes, I, I go back to a statement here a while back that I said that we we have a tendency to make laws that we that are unenforceable, number one. And it's harder in the county to enforce them. When, and and when you're, I mean, so those why go through the trouble of creating language right. that we can't? Well, we don't see, enforce or can't enforce. Countywide, Bill's the, like the only enforcement officer in the county. However, if the, you know, we change the rules and the city adopts those rules, the city has a, an ordinance enforcer. And, you know, 153.16 is the county zoning ordinance, and that is all would also be adopted as a city ordinance that could be enforced by the city. Well, the idea is that, number one, is that you also want to make people... There should be the home, home office telling you things like that. that no, 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 zero, almost zero risk to make an effect on other properties. Uh, the other one is where there's some small risk for their staff. The other one, then you have other uses that you really need to go through and look at, such as uh, out in the county, as uh, twice the abortion. Uh, Car repair, and uh, but yeah, no doubt there's people out there that are doing those things. But the other opportunity, other idea is that you also have ordinances adopted against people who should be doing things legally. Legally, uh, this would this could this could tie into uh, okay, whether it's taxes or anything else. Is going on. But it's the because right now the way it is, it's that, it's, that guy with the home office. Well, Technically, in violation of the zoning code. To not do anything means that person is still technically in violation of the zoning code. And it means that your choice, your decision is to ignore them. So, uh, either you need to turn uh, ignore things, rely on uh, basically a uh, friend, family, or neighbor, and not the house or something. Mm -hmm. Or you provide a means for them to be legal. I 
people are acting in ignorance, I found with that and other, other things, when people are acting in ignorance, they're apologetic. Now, when people get in my face, that's someone who's trying to get away with something. They're trying to bend the rules. So, yeah. most, of the, most of the people I've come across with this and other things, they aren't aware of things. And so they're, they're apologetic and they do what they can. But are we going to be able to write one that's going to cover every incident? That's going to be okay. Oh. Well, no. That's why there's a discretionary factor right here. What you're describing what the use is, what it's meant. There's a minimum number of uses that are actually prohibited as a home occupation. They can't do. They can't consider. <coughs> but it's there's it's this is meant to be written in a way that isn't going to define every single possible thing that could be allowed. Bill, Bill, are there other counties using this language or uh, did yes, we reinvent it? Tippecanoe. Tippecanoe. This, this is, I created a lot of this particular county. Uh, other counties use a three-chair approach. Because they're trying to get away with something. Because otherwise, it is right now, every single home occupation needs to go in front of the zoning board whether it makes sense to do it or not. And so the other idea by then having multiple tiers is that it's the one you've mentioned in the past year, is that running people through things, wasting their time and wasting their money. So particularly this is where the, the tier one comes in place in the tier two. Okay. All right. Can I ask um, sure. the, this is just a thought. There, because of COVID, there are so many people who are not electing to work at home, they are hired to work at home. Exactly. This takes a and so if, if it's something you're hired to do, and you're by, by doing what you're hired to do, you're violating the ordinance or violating, you know, breaking the law. That's something that needs to be done for them. Oh, God. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I understand what, I, I understand from this, that standpoint that, that they're currently breaking our zoning ordinance. And I don't disagree with addressing that. I just wonder, you know, maybe we just don't make it illegal <laughs> for them to do that. You know, rather than, I, I, I'm just saying instead of writing another Bible, maybe we just simply make, allow it. Here. This is fewer pages than what we have now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's much fewer. If you, just, um, if you just allow it across the board, then anybody can do anything. Yeah. Which means that uh, in your neighborhood, it's, it's and that, illegal for someone to open up a uh, yeah. backyard uh, auto garage right next to you. And, and that, gives, that gives you, the city council, the opportunity to create city ordinances to be enforced by your ordinance officer, enforcement officer, well, and, and govern your own entity. Well, the so the code is actually adopted by the city as a city ordinance. Yeah. So, which is why they have the authority also to enforce it. Um, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but once again, this would just be part of a public hearing. Yes. Multiple, if we yeah, multiple move this. Changes. Yeah. So would you like a motion to move this? No, not at this no, time. No, well, I think right now is, there's a lot of different things we want to put together. And I would say, until you get the point of certain parts of it, Everything in the accessory. I wouldn't have a public hearing for this. No, no I'm not saying okay. just move it to that stack. Oh, move it to that stack. Be, yeah, yeah. be done with this language and move on to the next. Yeah. Can, yeah. Oh, that's a general idea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That, I, Brian, I, if, if I may, I'd, I'd make a motion that we uh, accept this as part of the package, total accessories package that will eventually go to public hearing. Um, accept this language as presented. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Do a roll. Is there any or further this discussion? Can be, this can be accepted as a, uh, as a Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? On that motion carries. We'll skip swimming pools for now. Well, I would I'd say skip the other ones. It's kind of long enough. Yeah. It's four drums. Because there's, there's three more sections in here, and uh, one is going to require a lot more discussion. The only one, I, I do want to bring up one in particular, uh, the fee schedule. Oh. Um, uh, 
we need to, so right now our fee schedule is actually inside the zoning ordinance. Um, so in order to change the fee schedule, you have to, it's a whole process as opposed to allowing the commissioners to set the fee schedule on an annual basis or, um, you know, as at their discretion. Um, I think we need to really consider, this isn't a complete fee schedule, but we need to consider removing the fee schedule from the, the zoning ordinance and having it be a separate fee schedule set by the commissioners. Does that take a public hearing? Yeah. Yeah, it's to remove it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll remove it. That, that'll be having the language, removing it, and also making the motion to remove the uh, fee schedule. Yeah. 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 And you would like to have a separate hearing for that? Uh, that this yeah. thing will require a separate hearing. Yes. Um, Mr. President, if I may, I, I would move that we would um, move the uh, permit fees and the building building code yeah, yeah, both the, uh, fees. Code, fees also out of the subdivision, the subdivision fees. The subdivision fees. And then also from the building code. And the building code. Uh, those fees, I would move that we'd have, uh, take that to public hearing in order to remove those from our master zone. And one thing that would need to be done at the same time also is that, uh, well, one, because it's, there's things in our in zoning code that we the building code that we adopt, the Indiana building codes. And that's basically all it's there for. It's, uh, there's things in there that the state of Indiana would really want people to get out of there. Because it involves, it involves things at a local level, the fire and build, building commission, all that security, they don't want to be involved in. And that's why, that's why we come in with the fees. They, the state of Indiana does not want fees. Because you adopt the building code, you amend the building code, the state of Indiana, the Fire and Building Commission, has to approve it. So. Okay. So we have a motion to move forward to a public hearing to remove those fees from the ordinance. I'll it's second. not removing the fees, it's from the ordinance. I'll second that. Yeah, second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. Do we want to look at dates for that? Or? I don't think so at this time. Well, this think. one's still going to take some work. Yeah. Okay. Particularly on the, uh, the, as I was emphasized with the training sessions, that we really, if your fee, if your fee should be based on the actual number. Bill's right now looking at what his actual time, like, you know, you build a house, it's 13 inspections to build a house, so what's the time it takes to do all well, 13 yeah, inspections? Yeah. What's the actual I understand time? that. Yeah. So we're, but I, I, I just want to remind us that we are up against a deadline. We, we set a goal to have new yeah. building fees or permit fees to the commissioners for January 1. Yep. So, yeah. And I think we're on schedule for that. I think that's one where they like get a different iteration. I think that should also be one of the priority discussion items that comes up. So I have something So then, then, when Bill, I, then when I have the numbers in place, you really want to have a good, good public discussion about those also. Okay. Will that require then two public hearings, one to take it out of the main no, no, zoning code, we'll do, and then one to create. Okay. What we would do is there'd be a public hearing to okay, amend the amend those out adjust. I think it would take what would it take then? Probably actually a resolution though for the uh, you know for the commissioner to adopt that as far as the other piece of the Yeah, and then they I, I believe that has to be a public hearing every time they adjust that because they're adjusting yeah. fees. Yeah, so yes, so the public hearing would be on the part of the county. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd the, have to public. We'd have to have a public hearing to get it out of the right. Public hearing. So everything that we're going to remove and then place into a fee schedule, all those have to be included at the same time. And then we would vote on that 
fee schedule as a recommendation to the county commission. Yep. The commissioners probably need to do it first, though. Yeah. Because here's why. Then, then we get rid of ours, schedules. and then they. That's true. Yeah. Then, so I'm, then we're gonna have a run on permits that cost nothing. Commissioners <laughs> need to be able to have the information in place to pass theirs, and then we could have ours to eliminate it. And the basis would be we eliminate it because the commissioners already have the schedule that in place. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moving on to item five, the director's report. Are there any questions on the deck? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a second. I have a second. Yes, second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried.